I don't know if you're aware of our link with you, Sam, but I'm going to show you a quick video and then I'll just explain. <laughs> You have to read this. You have to follow the words. Porque é um trabalho que toca a vida das pessoas. Mas eu deixei a escola muito cedo e eu não tenho nenhum tipo de qualificação. Eu não tinha a menor ideia de como procurar o trabalho dos meus sonhos. Aí eu ouvi sobre Bela Unicef, Making Ways. Então, eu entrei no programa e aprendi muitas experiências de vida e também experiência profissional. Eu também aprendi experiência de cabeleireiro, incluindo corte e coloração. Graças aos conselheiros do Hotel, que compartilharam a paixão e conhecimento deles comigo. Então, isso mudou a minha vida. Agora eu posso conseguir trabalho no salão, justamente como eu sonhei, e ganhar dinheiro para mim e para minha família no futuro. Eu sempre fui capaz de fazer isso. É que eu não tive oportunidade. Então, para todos aqueles que têm apoiado o Make Works, em nome de todos os adolescentes, assim como eu, que vocês estão ajudando, eu gostaria de dizer obrigado. Vocês estão nos dando o maior presente, oportunidade. I don't know if you're aware of what we do with UNICEF. We've been making ways with UNICEF, and uh, every time you buy some of the water products, we donate money. So all that money goes to this program. And we work in mainly Brazil, um, Vietnam, and Romania, where we're putting together programs and help youngsters who don't have the opportunities that we have in this country. I show this to lots of students in lots of colleges. I go around lots of colleges around the country, and. Uh, we don't always realize how fortunate we are. They don't have those opportunities in those countries. So that's one way that we support. We also actually send um, hairdressers out there. So uh, every year there's an opportunity for one hairdresser from the UK to go because they send them from all different countries. And you can apply online to go and you actually go on the trip. Actually, the last one uh, when the last <coughs> went to Brazil, the, I think the next one's going to Vietnam, which will be in September. So you can apply online at the moment to apply for that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll filter it down and then one person gets chosen to go. And it's an amazing trip. And the guy who went for it was from Soul Hair in Chester, uh, went uh, last time. And he actually came and talked to us uh, in, in January about the trip and said it's the most inspiring trip he's ever done and how much he enjoyed doing it and how much he got out of it from you know, going out there and sharing his skills with people. Like so I'd just like to share that with you. Uh, just to uh, start us off with the afternoon session. So, is, is Rob ready to kick off again? Um, while I'm here, can I just say a very, very big thank you to the college for hosting today. They have been superb. They have put all this thing there together for me. Um, they've got amazing facilities. Uh, I, I've just been talking to a lot of you. I know you enjoyed your lunch. That actually is open. The restaurant is open on a commercial basis. You can come in for a coffee. There's also a, a delicatessen there. So, if you're in Leeds, come and pay a visit. 
Um, the college has got a whole wide range of courses available, so they've got amazing facilities that you've been able to, to share with them today. So do take advantage of it. And a very, very big thank you from me uh, to the college for, for hosting today. They've been absolutely amazing. And all the technology bit that they're using on right away, it's incredible. So uh, very impressed. I'm waffling now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, please welcome back Rob Eaton. Thank you. Give him a round of applause, shall we? Back our first two colour results and so you can see see what we've uh, achieved. I think we just stand forward. Um, if everyone wants to have a closer look at the colour results, obviously feel free to come up, take some pictures and things as well. Just to recap over what we've done here. So um, this is the shine line technique that we talked about. So you can really see how this kind of makes the hair kind of look more 3D, got a lot more texture to it. And you can see these kind of bursts of brighter colour. Um, I've actually dressed this over to the side. It's darker, but when you press this the other way, you can see how you've got this kind of like light to bright room, which again is something that's quite quite edgy and quite different, but it shows how you get these kind of real strong panels of colour that break through. But I think it's a it's a technique that works really, really well. And um, it's something that's definitely a, a slightly more modern, uh, freer way of working with colour. Um, and just to recap over the colours again, it's working with cost cost and perfect citizens, so we've got Different mixtures of the stroke 55 uh, 66 with the 1066 and the L65 mixed together. I'll let Joby recap over hers. Okay, so I hope you like the results. So, this is our colour scheme. So, we've got the Stroke 55 mixed together with the 1066. Using our domestic range, just with pastel, so it's really temporary, it's going to rinse out over a couple of washes. Um, we've gone through with our baby pink, and then you can just see hints of our lilac and then down into our jaded mint through the ends. <coughs> so, as I've explained to you before with the sectioning pattern, it means that we get these ribbons of colour that come through the underneath and kind of fan out through our model's hair. It's something a bit different from a dip dye or just an all over toner, it's a different way of working, it's a bit more fun. and. So feel free to come and have a look if you want to, or take any pictures if yeah. you want to as well. Yeah, the girls made for a couple of minutes, so take some pictures. Feel free if you want to get your get your hands in to have a look at some of the colour results as well. And any questions you've you've, you've got as well? If there's anything you've thought about over the lunch break, then just uh, shout out. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually quite like it. I mean, I know this is kind of going against traditional hair, but it's sort of rules, but I actually quite like how it's picked up. So, I mean, you can do different things with it. Save a lot of time with the uh, <laughs> 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 
So, any more questions about the two cool results before the girls? Very nice. One that we did is that we put a couple of highlights. One was one that 9% and then we just put one that we did. So, thank you for talking to. This afternoon we're going to move on to something completely different, which is where we're going to show you some of the more editorial inspired session work that we do. Um, so we've got three models we're going to present to you, quite a big cross section. And um, again, most of it's on the slightly kind of edgier side of what we do with the so There's a lot of technique within it as well, um, that, that's really, really great that you can sort of learn from. So this is Jay, this is uh, one of our assistants that works within our lead cells, which is here to help us today. Um, and uh, pass a few things to us. So we've actually got some slides as well that I've just kind of pulled up at this point. So this is the, the afternoon section as well, which is the joke. Okay. Okay. So you can see what we're working with here. So we've got some, some long hair that we're going to be dressing. Um, so this is a nice introduction to Joey. Now Joey in particular is very, very passionate about long hair and session work. She does a lot of the session work that we're doing in salon as well. So some of the looks that she's going to show you can directly from some of the, the fashion work that she's done whilst working at London Fashion Week. Oh, thank you. 
I'm just going to run you through um, a ponytailing technique actually we're going to be in today. Um, I know ponytailing is a bit between ponytail and how to do a perfect ponytail, etc. Um, but I'm actually going to do it with a bit of, a, bit of a twist. I'm actually going to do an origami ponytail. So working quite low and working with a small <coughs> silhouette on the hairline. I'm actually going to take some folds and fold some hair over. So going back to what I mentioned, I'm quite obsessed about making hair and material and not treating my hair. We're actually kind of using um, the hair, we're using hairspray and water, layering in together to make it kind of laminate. So it's, we're almost laminating the hair basically and then folding it over one another. And um, we've got gorgeous hair to work on, gorgeous, nice, straight, smooth hair, which we've pre-ironed. Um, and I'm going to just kind of start sectioning off for you. This is something that I did at Paris Fashion Week for a designer called um, Lee Sang Bong, who's a Korean designer. Obviously, he's not French with a name like Lee Sang Bong. <laughs> um, it was really amazing actually working for, for a Korean designer because the discipline that they have is really different to what you see in London. Like the guys in London are quite free and a bit more natural, whereas in Asia, the Asian designers are quite strict and things quite clean and quite strong lines. It was interesting to work on something that was a bit stronger, which is what I'm going to show you today. What I'm going to work on is a look that we did um, at London Fashion Week, so myself and Joey worked on, on this. And this was something for um, Weller, Weller Professionals, the sort of luxury brand, which is System Professional, and they've got a brand of products called Lux Oil, so just to, to represent that on fashion. So if you show you the, uh, these images of what Joe is trying to achieve, it's like <coughs> examples of, of what she, she worked on. You can see that kind of old down feel. This is actually something for, um, that was for Harvey Nichols. So using inspiration from what we did at Fashion Week, which was quite similar actually, but we just introduced the folds through the top, um, just for a bit more of a change really, just for something different, which is what I'm going to show you today. So the, the look I'm going to show you is what we created on the Fashion Week. So this is based around um, the idea of creating a kind of modern beehive shape. So it's a very, very strong structured shape, but then introducing some texture as well. So they're working with texture around the hairline. Um, so you get something that's quite sort of soft at the same time. So as Jody just mentioned, a lot of the sort of foundation of any look that you see uh, on the catwalk starts with very, very sort of strong structure and strong um, sort of foundation of, of any hairstyle, so then it's prepping it with product. So in this instance, I've worked with some elegant shape mousse, which is just given the hair a slightly stronger uh, feel. It's taken away some of the softness. We, we've actually blow right that into the hair. But we're also going to work a very sort of strong section pattern into the hair that helps us to make sure we can secure the shape really, really, really easily. Now this is a technique that we, we use a lot in salon as well, and it's actually a great technique for to use uh, back in, in your own salons as well. And it creates a great foundation for this beehive shape. So we're going to be working with two vertical rolls on either side. Um, so you can see what I've done here, we've sectioned this off. We've actually got a, a piece in the middle here and then two sections on either side. And I've also just got rid of the front to begin with as well. And what we're going to do here is actually do a, a scalp break down the center of the, the, the shape that we're creating. So it's almost kind of like the spine or the, the uh, sort of structure of the entire shape. So I'm going to start doing this and this is going to be braided right down to the nape of the neck continuing down to the ends of the, length, the middle ends and ends of hair. And I'm actually going to sew that back up on top of itself. Um, so that creates a really, really nice, strong foundation. So I'm just mapping out my ponytail. <laughs> and when I get that mapped, I can kind of show you more where we're working. So I'm taking... I've taken a radial section from here going straight over to the crown and I've taken a diagonal um, rectangle section and that's going to be my section that comes over. And then we're going to take a triangle at the side of that. So really you've got a kind of big square section from the eyebrow up to the top of the ponytail. And that's going to be my section that comes over to this side. So we talked a bit earlier on about how long hair is, um, is kind of the predominant look that comes into the salon now. And, and I think it's quite important when we look at sort of session style and style and editorial stuff, 
that we're doing today. To try and help give clients a bit of inspiration on, on different ways of wearing their hair. But how would you relate that to what how you work in, in Solomon? Do you find that you use fashion as a reference quite a lot? Massively, yeah, definitely. And a lot of the time, you know, going back to like what was it about Pinterest, you get your favourite Pinterest long hair looks coming in and you know your typical kind of bridal sort of feel but you'd be surprised at how many people are quite easily swayed to work into something a bit more fashion led there's um in particular this all a bit more reference later on when i show you the look i'm going to do on my second model um i'm actually working with some glitter and you would not believe when i say how many people are keen to have some glitter gelled into their hair like on a saturday night you wouldn't believe it so that made things really, really fun for us in the salon. Yeah, I mean, I think you saw the slides that we did with the Express hair bar earlier on, and it's not just based around glow line and um, using colour to create different shapes and uh, textures. It's around looks like this that have come directly from the catwalk, and, and we try to make sure that we have a couple of looks that we work on each season that clients can be inspired and motivated by. I think it is important as hairdressers as well. We do we do work in the fashion industry. You know, we're not just hairdressers. Like what Rob said earlier, your hair is pretty much the only accessory you don't take off before you go to bed every night. It's the ultimate fashion accessory. So for your clients to know that you're aware of what's going on in fashion and hair in fashion, it makes such a difference. So you can see how this is, uh, this is taking shape, I'm just creating this braid just down the centre of the head and I'm just following this through right towards the ends. You might be wondering why, why I'm putting this braid down the centre of the, the head here at the back. So we're, the reason for this is that you actually, when we try doing a hair style, it's a clear pleat, it's difficult to sometimes get the pins to sort of stay in place and to be secure. So the idea with this is creating a really nice foundation, almost like a pin cushion that's got to pin the, the, uh, the hair groups in. It help, helps to secure the, the shape. Um, because Tasha's hair is quite soft as well, even though we prepped it with quite a lot of mousse. Um, it will mean that the style will stay in shape a lot to the day. Okay, so I'm going to um, show you guys how I do my ponies. Um, a lot of people use elastic and curvy grips so that you use sponges, but I'm a bit old fashioned, I like a little bit of elastic and some knots. Um, but you do need a second pair of hands. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm actually going to go and we take a length of elastic, about a foot of elastic and I'm going to go underneath my assistant's uh, fist and I'm going to start pulling that really taut. So on, wherever you position your ponytail on the head, using this technique and elastic means it will, it will not move. Even if you wanted to, it is not going to move. So you can see here now I'm just going to loop this braid back on top of itself and we're going to actually use a, a sort of a, a needle and cotton so I've got a needle that's in a curve like this so we can kind of curve around and sew it in uh, and then just I'm just going to do that so it's a nice even uh, clean looking section throughout so it'll just be a couple of minutes while I just get this sorted around going into my model scalp. <laughs> There was some uh, itchy moments at Fashion Week when we got like 15 girls to go and we were all trying to sew onto their heads and we were like, oh my god, just don't stop the models. So I'm really, really layering in the hairspray, but only <coughs> on the top. I'm almost spray painting it essentially with hairspray. Because um, I want this wet to dry finish at the end. Hairspray, Nioxin hairspray? Have you used it yet? No. Amazing. Mm -hmm. 
There's a whole new range of Nioxin Stardom products and they're just brilliant. I'm really getting on with them at the moment. For those of you that follow well, there's Facebook page, Instagram, it, but there's lots of how-to videos that have just been created. I've just done four for Nioxin, and they all show them the latest products and simple um, styles that you can create with them. Um, so they're on the well, YouTube uh, channel and also we'll be show on Facebook as well. So make sure you try to, to follow those two. And I'll share them now as well. So these um, really simple tips and little techniques that we're using are great to take back into song because the kind of tips and techniques that people at home really want to know about to use themselves as well. And what do you say, Jody, is one of the things that people ask for a lot or ask for advice about? Is the simplest thing? Things like waves. I always get asked about how to create waves. Really, really natural waves, not kind of set perfect curled waves like a little bit like your hair like really really natural get asked about that a lot and it's the littlest things that you think that you're never gonna that you think everyone knows you think everyone knows how to curl hair or everyone knows how to put their hair in a top knot or something like that and they're the things that get asked the most and funnily enough it's making hair not look done that seems to be the thing that clients yeah. want to know more about well they're paying us a lot of money to do that. Yeah. sometimes what you don't need to hair yeah better than what you actually do by putting loads of products on there. Totally agree with that while I hammer my own client. Maybe gel and glitter. But I think on a, from a client perspective, what what girls want to see their hair like nowadays, I don't think many people want their hair to look done. If you look at the people that are coming through, you know, like, I say coming through, Alexa Chung, Carrie Delevingne, it's Suki Waterhouse, it's all girls that look like they've literally got out of bed or just come back from a nightclub. And that's kind of what every girl and mum really wants to look a bit like. <laughs> so we actually do blow dry lessons as well in our salon, which is a really, really amazing way of getting your clients to understand styling more. And you know what, kind of respect it a bit more as well, like take style a little bit more seriously. Yeah, I mean, the, the blow dry sort of masterclasses we've been running because, as Jody says, it sort of gives people a lot of inspiration. It really helps help them to understand some of the technique behind some of the looks of the trades. Um, but it's also a really great introduction to some of the things that we do in the salon as well. So you can talk about colour, you can talk about what products they're using, you can talk about. Um, or hair dryer than using, for example, or straight. So it kind of links into so many different things. It's amazing as well what people are doing to their hair. Nine times out of ten, somebody's doing something so simple wrong with their hair. It can be something so small, down to the size of brush they use, the dryer they use, if they use a dryer. I've had clients say to me before, oh, you have all that mousse, but you know what, I'm not that keen, it didn't work. And I'm like, okay, so what did you do? Well, I put it in and then um, I slept on my hair and then I straightened it in the morning. And I'm like, that'll do it. That's not going to make your hair look very nice. So it's just about kind of educating your clients on what to do and what not to do. So I've just taken my first section and I'm sure you can see now the kind of difference in texture and that kind of wet to dry feels that it's happened now. I want to keep everything really, really snug and really close to the head, follow the head shape. Right then, so we basically just braided that for the centre there. You can see how that's all sewn back on top of itself, a nice little neat um, section. It's, that's basically the spine of this, this hairstyle, so it's what's going to support it. Going to it. We're now going to move on to the side sections, and this is where we're going to create the um, sort of two vertical rolls that will then create this kind of modern beehive shape. Uh, but before I do that though, I'm just going to section out a really irregular shaped section just around the hairline. So this is where we're going to introduce some texture later on. We'll take a, section that's about an inch wide. 
taking that out of the way. And it's acting the same at this side as well. So I'm actually, this whole hair is going to be done with, with bits of elastic, basically. So the same piece of elastic that I cut on the underneath that I tied off, I'm now dragging through to this side. And it's going to secure in my um, my layered piece. Right. So with the remainder of the hair, what we've done now is just taken out a triangular shaped section here. From so that kind of goes from the top of the braid forward to just kind of just short of where the temple end is. Or you imagine where the fringe would lay, just going to take that up piece there. Again, what we do now is just kind of section that out of the way. now leaves us these two side sections to work with. And what we're going to do now is just leave some really um, sort of quite firm back combing in the shape to create this, this fuller beehive. So taking sections and really pushing the hair back down on itself. And I'm just working through this whole section. Taking diagonal sections as a work through. The hair gets a bit soft as you work, you put a little bit of hair to make through as well. It's what got me into hairdressing, to be honest. Just go to school and just hit like curvy grips and L-neck in my band to twist some girl's hair when I was in my lunch. It sounds a little bit funny if I start saying that. I'd be posting that. It was a very adult head when I went uh, and helped out on Saturday when I was <laughs> with, um, about 11 or so to get to there. To, That's the thing about being in a family business, you kind of get the right to come and help them at an early age. I can imagine you with a tail comb at the edge of my stick. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing here now, because we put that, that back comb into it, it's got a nice foundation to work with. I'm just smoothing over the surface so we just get a, a nice amount of shine there as well. Natasha's got quite, um, quite soft hair, so I'm still going to work with a little bit of hairspray as well. Just control any of the uh, sort of flyaway bits. working very, very visually. What I'm doing now is just kind of looping the hair back round, and twisting it into itself to create this kind of pleat shape. And because we've got that braid that's there now, that's going to enable us to put the pins into it so it really, really well. Sometimes people find when they're, they're working with a pleat or something that's quite, um, quite structured like this, it's kind of controlling all the grips and getting it to stay in place at the same time. So just that little dip of doing that braid there is a great way of securing it a bit further. I 
I'm thinking about the shape all the time as well, so making sure we're getting a really nice angle in there as well. worked with a really really high gloss high shine really simple finish down into something that's really really dry and sleek and straight so dual texture is something that every spring and summer in particular <coughs> you will always see you'll always see that kind of acne cool look where the girl's hair is like gelled back um, so I think it's always something that we need to be aware of it's not going to go away anytime soon um, so taking out square section we've literally crisscrossed that and layered and layered and layered hairspray um, until eventually we form like a vinyl rather than strands of hair. We've got one piece of hair, as it were. So we took, we took a ponytail out. Everything was really, really clean and then really swept back and that kept our little triangular piece that we've been left with. And then we took over our pieces. It's all been secured by a piece of elastic. Half popped a good thing there just to make sure, because I wanted to take it quite low, gravity <coughs> eventually that will slip. So I just made sure there's a grip there, and there's a grip holding the hair tie as well. So two grips, and I sound like Patrick Cameron. Mm -hmm. Two grips, and a piece of elastic. <laughs> so I hope you like it, and feel free to come and have a look or a touch. Yeah. I'm just going to say the same thing about where I've got to now. So I've just shown that just by putting one grip in, you can secure that shape, but because we've got that, that spine or that um, sort of scalp braid to secure with, it makes it feel nice and tight and secure. That's lovely. And the, the thing about something like that is it's so simple and kind of, kind of understated elegance, really. So you can just see as it hits lights, you can see how at a fashion show that will work really, really well because the light like, bounces straight off it. And then as she moves, the ponytail is just going to swing pull the light away from it. Just put it on again for me. So yeah, really, really nice and tight and low, and then you've got that contrasting texture. Okay, thank you. If you want to come up and have a close look, or if you want to take a picture, feel free to yeah, come feel free up. To come up. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm not on the other side, yes, that's good. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just constantly looking all the time. It's not, it's, it's not, it is easy. Yeah. Uh, the more you, you, you do it, I suppose, the better you get. One thing I would say about this, though, is that it's not about it being like this like super perfect thing for both sides. It's about just slight, so it's a physical one. It's kind of structured. Um, it's got that shape. I quite like how it's a bit summer I use. So I quite like that. But it's time to get some things. So, um, so what I'm doing now is doing is exactly the same technique on this side, so just repeating it. So we've got one vertical roll through here, and now back on it all, going to smooth over the surface, a little bit of hairspray, and create the same shape at the other side. So I'm going to just ask you a couple of seconds ago about how to create it, how to, how to get it as even at both sides. It really is just down to looking, and, and if you have got a mirror in front of you, that helps as well. And also not to be scared to keep moving 
the chair around as well. I think sometimes the sadness can get fixated on just being in one position yes. and kind of not looking properly. So keep twisting the, the, uh, the chair around so you can, you can see the shape developing. Again, I'm sort of looking as I'm going going through, making sure it's all nice and smooth. One thing I would say though about hair up now and, and, and dressing hair, and I suppose this is particularly for the salon work as well, the, the, the technique and the structure around it is really, really important. But at the same time though, not many um, clients would want them that's kind of really, really extreme as well. So it's known where it's appropriate to soften things and to make them more client friendly as well. So it's again taking inspiration and ideas from some other looks that we've created. But also knowing where you can adapt and change things a little bit as well. So uh, to make this a little bit more salon friendly, you might not want to quite as, as extreme or quite as full. So this is Helena, my other beautiful model. And as you can see, we've done it's actually 17 We've actually done um, a curl set. So I want to create a vintage wave on Helena. Um, Again, something you'll see heaps of blood. I do this a lot for bridal, um, and even just for kind of vintage style, you know, just the nights out and things like that. So I started with the nape, and I've actually used um, a couple of different heat tools. I've used a wand underneath, and then I've used um, a straightener, um, the standard kind of Japanese style well, a straightener, that I've all curled in the same direction and pinned, and it's like about an hour. The hair was, um, you go down, I take this length out by the way, she's got amazing hair to like here, yeah, it's all natural colour, I can believe it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, all three of our models just have to do with a totally natural Yeah, yeah, virgin hair. She's going to be natural first thing. But uh, anyhow, yeah, so I've put this curl set in here. Firstly, I'm going to show you the vintage way and show you how to brush out, which it's a really, really simple thing to do, but it's really, really important to know how to do it. And then going, to, going back to what I said before about spring summer collections, going from wet to dry, I'm going to follow that through into Helena's hair. I'm actually going to gel Helena's hair wet to the scalp until the occipital, and then let the waves form. And then I'm going to apply a head full of glitter onto her hair, which um, it, for girls is great. It's glitter. Right, so you can see what I've done there, just replicated it exactly the same on this side. So you can see how you've got those two vertical rolls, how that lifts to create this this, uh, this higher shape at the back. So what we're going to do now is work with this section that we left out of the foot. So this is the triangular section that we talked about before. Um, so we've got three sections remaining, this one and then the other two are either side, which is going to be able to do it through some texture. So again, with what we do here now, we just take some sections, back comb the hair, And then smooth over the surface. And then this is going to create kind of like the top piece that's going to cover the, the two, uh, two vertical roll. Important to bear in mind as well here, <coughs> excuse me, that we don't want the back coming to be really high here as well. If you wanted to create a shape that lifted more and it was almost more quick, you could do that. But here it's important that we get a shape that kind of goes from the forehead and goes back into the, the remainder of the vertical roll. Bit of flashbacks now watching you do that. Um, no. Yes, we did so many models like this. We had 15 girls that all needed to be done at the same time that looked like this with, with this look. And um, basically, I'd, like, we had about five girls in the beginning that all arrived on time. The other girls came from different shows. So they all had one girl was Japanese and she had dreadlocks in the back of her hair and we needed to get it out and off and we got six minutes before the show started. It was pure carnage burning. Yeah. But 
But then you see them all work out and they walk like swans, like nothing ever happened backstage and it's just amazing when it's all done, when it comes together. So I'm going to spin Helen around for you so you can see. So we prepped the hair with a living shape mousse and quite a lot of it blow dried it smooth. And then we went through using our wand on the underneath, you can see the thread curl, and then I'll straighten through the top so we get a bit more of a drag through the top. I didn't want it to be a constant curl the whole way through. So now I'm going to rick my fingers through the curl and then I'm going to start to brush it out. So in the top section, you can see what I've, I've done here. We've kind of swept that back so we get a really nice shape. And then we're using the ends of the hair. A couple of ways of doing this, you can put an elastic in the, in the bottom just to help control it all. I'm just going to loop this up and just twist it over and, and secure with, with fine French pins. Now, I, I quite like how this is quite soft over the top, so it's a nice contrast to, to how the uh, the rest of the shape's looking. Again, just using some, some of these, these pins. Just take forward slightly for this. And again, using the anchor of the, the braid that's at the centre to secure with, so it almost acts like a little, little pin push in. Yeah, I mean, I, I've done, for like the hair like, people just curly hair like mine, I don't like the chronicle. No, I don't. But for things like this, it's amazing, because there is a time and place for it. It's a very curly curl, if that makes any sense. So I quite like this shape on its own without doing anything else to it. It's quite a cool shape anyway, and it's nice and sleek and smooth. But what we're going to do now is we'll move on to working with some texture. So a new <laughs> So a new texture that we're working with quite a lot um, is, is what we call pressed curls. So the idea with this is that we're going to take some really sort of small, fine sections, place it around in a sort of little square of a, about half an inch each piece. So we're looking at the sections like that. Put a tiny bit of hairspray in each one. And the idea with this is that we're going to actually feed this curl through the, the iron to create our own sort of mini pressed S bend shaped curl. So, just using normal soft irons. Hopefully, you can all see this properly as well. And what I'm doing now is just feeding this through the hair, flattening the curl as I create it. A little bit fiddly to start with, end up burning yourself a little bit to begin with. So I've just got the basis of my wave in there now. Um, I wanted it to look like uniform and all as one, as it were. So. I've just, I'm just going to now create some indentations where the crests of my wave are. So I just want kind of three crests, um, just to kind of keep that in place. Thank you. So you can see there the curl that we've, we've achieved. So it's got that very, very sort of soft S bend shape to it. Um, it's flat as well. So the difference between a quite a sort of bouncy curl is you'd expect the curls to be quite plump and quite full. Whereas with this, we flattened it a lot as well. So what I'm going to do now is just work through all of these sections of the front in exactly the same technique. So just feeding it through. Just to, um, to pin these in place, I'm just going to use a pin curl clip as well. That's going to be those chains. Just to secure it into any shape. If you want to take any pictures a bit more close up while we're doing this, by the way, feel free to call. Cool. Again, just feeding it through the hair. So you can create any shape you want. It looks quite nice if you uh, also create some a bit more jagged looking as well. It doesn't have to necessarily be a curve. 
Okay, so I'm just about done with my set. You could leave this as is, and that could be your kind of blow dry, could be your finish, if that's what you wanted to achieve. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more. So I'm actually taking some hair gel. And to be honest with you, like most hair gels will work for this, but it needs to be strong and not something that's going to get white dots in it and go crispy and like my little brother's hair in the 90s. It needs to be something that's quite got a bit of moisture to it as well. Any questions about anything? Everybody's very quiet listening and watching, and watching what we're doing here. If there's anything you want to ask, just shout out. When you put your curls in, did you make sure you put them all in the same direction? direction? Yes. Yeah. Don't matter which direction, as long as you kind of commit to one. Yeah. Because I think if you go, I've seen waves done where people go one direction one way and then one direction the other, but I find that I can't get that to blend at the end. It looks fine if it's not brushed out. As soon as you brush it, it just goes huge. You always use a paddle brush to order to brush out. Yeah. Yeah, always use a dressing brush. This, <laughs> this particular curling technique looks absolutely amazing. It's done everywhere, actually, as well. You get a really, really what's a different effect. Take some time to do it, but you've been there, get really sort of a regular, quite sort of soft, whimsical kind of way. So this is, I'm taking hair gel in a tint bowl and painting that directly onto the root. I'm taking that round to a bone. Oh, please stop. You've got a pair that comes out of the head from my towel. What makes you get some gel? Why did you, you know, go wrong? Do you know you what you should do? Yeah, what you should do is, I mean, we, we tend to have creative workshops where we experiment a little bit. We all get models in or, um, or, or work on each other where you've got enough hair to do so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to try different things out. Or work on block heads as well. Um, and really perfect the things that you want them to do first. And then launch them to clients afterwards. Rather than kind of just thinking, oh, I'll have, I'll have built that. Uh, this is after they're going wrong and then they're putting you off ever trying again. And panicking heads as well. Like, yeah. it sounds like. We've always, somebody in the salon has always got the knees gross looking mannequins out. But we're always doing something on, we're always trying new things. Do you know what now as well though, as Joda mentioned earlier on, with, with uh, YouTube and all the videos that are out there now, sort of step-by-step -step tutorials on how to do things, it's so easy for us to learn how to do different things now. Yeah. We used to have a, well we still have a fairly strict policy on mobile phones in the salon, but as long as we're looking on things in uh, on Facebook or of videos on how to, to improve the hairdressing skills. We've, we've softened it a little bit now. We've got my people looking at things. I think you all use that on this. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Log off Facebook and straight on to <laughs> To be fair, that we've got such a creative team generally that we're, we're always talking about hair, we're always looking at hair, like we're all a bit obsessed. Another thing that could work great is people yeah. because we've got an inspiration board in the staff room. So what we encourage people to do there, just pin any ideas on, on that. So it might be something they've seen a, a shoot, or it might be a, a piece of fabric or material that like the texture of. It might be some work that you know the hairdresser do, and um, sort of other colours to think about working about. And the, the great thing with that is that it helps us to always have new ideas. Uh, to think about as well, and particularly if you're doing things like competitions as well, um, you can always see like a bit of a progression of ideas of where we've started thinking about a new palette of colours, for example, that then develops into something else. And if you do that kind of thing and do it all year round, you can really see how your ideas develop and whether you actually start to use them or not. I mean, go back to some of the colouring techniques, the idea that we talked about with the deluxe Rego, that came directly from us, a creative workshop in the salon, just experimenting with different sections, thinking about ways of improving the client's uh, colouring uh, services in salon. And then it just became something that we do lots and lots of in salon every single day. I think, I'm joking, you'll probably agree with this. That's the same with dressing long hair, really. It's very much about 
perfecting your skills, working on making sure that the technique's really, really strong because you've got everything there to create the perfect foundation. And then it's down to your own creativity to make those plans as well. I think sometimes as well, just trusting your taste, like not being scared that anyone's going to judge you or feeling a bit silly, but like going for it. You know, not everything's a good idea, some things go wrong. But you kind of have to try, you know, to know. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, I think when you, you're practicing different things, you probably at least 50% of the time it will go wrong more than it yeah, go right. Yeah. But that's what's you know, part of the fun about trying some of these different books and different styles. I remember. Have you used your book? Oh, sorry. Gel, yeah. The gel I've got is the sculpt ball. <laughs> So I'm just going to let those just cool down for a second, so I've just secured them all with the pins. Uh, just a few minutes just to let them secure. So whilst I'm doing that, I'm just going to just perfect over this shape a little bit more to make sure it's nice and easy. Yeah, um, we've done both. We try and do, it's not often when everybody's all together in the salon, but Thursday mornings tend to be quite a good time for us. So we'll do lots of training on Thursday mornings. We'll back book out till 12 o'clock each. Um, I always find that if we do too many things at night time, there's a lot of other distractions that are there for people to get off. And also, you're not always working the best as well. You're tired you're working all day on clients. Whereas if it's first thing in the morning, uh, people are a bit fresher and they're, 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 they've got new ideas that they want to try. Um, so, but we do do things at night time as well. Depends on on uh, on what it is we're doing. But for, generally, for training, we try try and do morning sessions. I feel like out of work suits like the art team better. Yeah. Um, and then if you want something to apply to everyone, I think it's just easier to do it in work hours because then everyone's involved. No one can. Yeah, there's nobody out. nobody can get out of it. You know, you can get everybody there. So you can see as I, I've sort of released these these pins, but it's nice kind of soft wave that's developed there as well. You'll see that as I'm, as I'm pulling it out. So it's, it's quite um, quite a modern looking curl really. It's something that's quite different. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As with everything, the longer you leave these in, the more set they become and the stronger they become. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of take my fingers through them a little bit just to open the pills, pills up. So this is just creating a much, a much softer texture, so it's quite floaty. It's almost kind of like a very large uh, version of when you wind hair around pins, you get that more like a bent shape. as well as kind of one of those products we've all forgotten about. Or it's always there in like a product stand but no one ever really plays with. Yeah, particularly wet look gel, you sort of think, oh, a few guys might have it. It's been on the shelves for a couple of years, it's never really sold properly. Whereas this is actually a really great way of working with it. You get people that won't wash their head off as well. It greasy, greasy room. So what I'm doing now is just kind of combing this back away from Space. So you can see how this is created texture that's laid over the surface of the the, uh, the shape that we've created. I'm actually going to use the air to dry a little bit to secure this as well. So really, really gently. You don't have hairspray as well, and um, sort of wrapping the spray to the air to dry it. And then the hairspray is going to almost act a bit like, like a glue that's going to help to stick it to, uh, to, to the shell. So I'm kind 
like it's all very, very windswept looking. You can see there like, the side how it kind of flows over the surface of the shell. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to get you a hairspray over there. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost kind of like a cobwebby kind of texture. So when we started to work, work and develop this shape, um, it, it kind of started off one way as being something quite structured and quite kind of quite clean and quite neat looking, and then developed into this, which is a bit more dynamic. It's a little bit more edgy looking, but it, it combines a texture that also creates something that's very, very sort of uh, soft and still quite wearable as well. So all I'm going to do now is just to secure this. I want it to be, which is a few really fine things. And actually, even using pins just to secure this while you spray it, opening them out and just kind of anchoring it into the shape. It's a great way of just kind of setting the Then if again it's really important just to visually just check the shape, make sure that there's there's no areas that you're not sure about, any bits that are sticking out, looking at this is you know, affecting a little bit more. So what I'll do now is just recap over what we've done, I'll just stand here. So this is the look that we use. we created at London Fashion Week. So it's our kind of modern take on a, a sort of beehive, really, but using some quite strong classic uh, editorial skills. So let me turn those slightly. We've got a very strong um, vertical roll at either side, secured within the braid that runs up the centre. Uh, and then we've worked with um, a press curl technique. So the idea with that is just moving the hair really sort of slowly to create an S bend shape throughout the heat from the irons and press them, let them set. And then we just kind of raked our fingers through it and, and brushed it out, and then use the air from the dryer to create this shape. It's very, very sort of windswept and very, very soft looking. If I could just get this working again, it's a couple of pictures uh, I wanted to show. So this is the um, the image that we created actually at the fashion week. I'll let you know that slide. And you can see how uh, it's brought to life on some of the models that you can see there as well. So um, I really wanted to sort of share that with you today and sort of show you how you can use products and simple techniques to create something that's very, very edgy in the story. So, I don't know if you want to come and take some pictures or have a closer look at this. Uh, if, you do, if there's any questions about anything as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I just like how there's a contrast between something that's sleek and neat against something that's soft. And that's sort of what makes it look a bit more, a bit more modern looking. And you can imagine somebody younger coming and actually asking for this, whereas they might not ask for it in a normal way. Yeah. 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 I think crimpers might be a little bit too tight, yeah. but you can, you can, you can, you can spoil yeah. and uh, might say that's exactly true. Sure.
I think the idea of creating like a progressive curve is quite nice because it's almost creating like a personalised curve that you need to learn as well. So you're not just doing something that's, uh, that's kind of the same as everybody else. <coughs> And what we'll do at the end, guys, we'll get all three models lined up together so you can have a close look at them all afterwards as well. <laughs> So while Jody's doing this, this next thing, there's a couple more slides at the lake where you're, you're at at the moment, Jody, as well. So it's got a look on screen now that it's where we kind of got a lot of inspiration for from this, this kind of work. Um, and this contrast of textures, so something sleek but and wet it going to something that's drier and, and softer on the end as well. I'm just quiet now because this is really, really cool bit this. <laughs> no pressure. Don't <laughs> spill the glitter everywhere. Oh, yeah. So I've done um, my wet to dry. So basically, out of one heat set, you can have three, or oh, nearly, <laughs> um, you've got three different edi really editorial looks that you can take on it. So you can keep the waves loose, um, which is a little bit more wearable, or you can actually kind of do your dual texture by using the gel. I absolutely love this gel because it is just so like gooey, like proper gel. Um, just to head back on me. So you can just see, like, if you were photographing that, how that could look as an image, or again, if it was for a catwalk. So that's my wet to dry look for you. And I'm now going to go through and decorate it, basically. So one thing that I got really, really carried away with and really into last year was using glitter on everything. So gems, anything. <laughs> they went so I was cool. walking around the salon with glitter. <laughs> <laughs> so the gel, this is where the wet to dry comes in as well because the gel is, the gel is actually quite practical to need something for the glitter to stick to. Um, so I've got, we've got heaps and heaps of glitter in here. We've got bags and bags of it in the salon. It's currently all over my spare bedroom carpet from when I packed the kit bags up last night. So I'm going to use a really beautiful teal glitter. And when you start actually looking for glitter, it's amazing. I was going to say, is it just like your arts and crafting? Yeah, yeah. hobby craft is amazing yeah. for it. Um, my wife wondered what on earth I was doing when I came back from there. Uh, <laughs> no, wait, what is matching now? It was, what's hobby craft or something like that with bags of glitter? Say so something like you can get it for when you do nails and stuff as well. Yeah, that's nice because it's really, really fine and stuff you get for nails. So you've got a really intricate makeup job if you're doing this for a fashion shoot. You want to make sure you use something like a vibrant to do that. How easy is it to get it out after? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Shower. Definitely, definitely a shower. But, you know, One of the models that uh, Jodie did earlier, Emily, we did pastel colours on. Uh, she did a, a little tour of um, just all the hair shows in, in the south room. We did this technique then. She had it every single night, and then we had to drive on somewhere else. So my car, when we were driving to it, all the headrests have got so <laughs> glitter. I'm really sorry to the college as well because this is going to take some cleaning. This has been my favourite thing to do ever in hairdressing. I absolutely love doing this. It's like being a little girl again. Yeah, it really is. It's like being a kid. It's everything that you want to do. Is it worth the same with sprinkles? Yeah. 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 No, I've tried. I thought it'd be amazing with spray glitter, but it just, it's like dance competition. It's, 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 it's not enough. It gives you a little sparkle, but not like a full head of it. I think to create that thick, thicker feel to it as well, to really look like it's yeah. I think to stick on it too. <laughs> you know what, you say that, like I said to you this morning, you will not believe the people that have gone out in Leeds on a Saturday night with this. 
And after today, we thought, <laughs> 40 hair is going to be more. I'll go back and buy glitter, there'll be a lot more people having it. We'll see, everyone stood outside here. This is awesome. Yeah, and then the glitter. Yeah. Just while Jody's doing this, Alton, there's a couple more slides that we put together to. To illustrate this, so again, working with this kind of dual texture idea, there's different ways of, of, of working with that. So you can either go to something quite sleek and quite smooth, or even sort of twisting it as well, so you kind of get this slightly more dready feel to it as well. And um, working with glitter is something, get even working with different texture patterns as well, where you're sticking and taking pieces of hair back. Working with glitter doesn't always have to be in big blocks as well, you can be a bit more delicate with it too, or even use things like gold leaf as well, which can work quite well too. Um, and that again shows on a slightly drier texture how it can still work with it as well. And these are all mood boards that we use in salon to, to illustrate it to clients as well. Because again, if you were to talk talk about this to a client in the salon, you probably won't really get it without seeing some images. So in this particular one, we kind of like very much what we do here. The second one there you can see is a, a glitter ponytail that looks really, really cool as well. Um, you could do a glitter top knot. So there's, there's so many different um, sort of variations of it as well. But you can imagine to show clients this, it, it makes it a bit more a bit more accessible and a bit more real to them as well. I'm actually quite surprised we've not seen this coming through yet for things like award ceremonies and like yeah. the breaks or something like the beach oracle. Same way with this. And then this is something new that we're going to be working on for this summer as well. And this is kind of still working on the same concept of incorporating something that's not natural into hair. Uh, and this is working with different um, cottons and wools as well and, and using that with a braid as well. And that's a really cool idea. Chalk. Say that again. We do it with chalk. Do you, yeah, you, yeah, you can do it with hair chalking, yeah. yeah. Um, this idea of, of, of plaiting different textures into hair as well is something that's really cool as well. So what we're trying to show here as well is, is kind of thinking outside the box a little bit really and thinking well what else can you use within hair? It's not just about um, kind of working with hair just on its own. You can use something that's, that's not very natural. So there's a you going to salon? <laughs> 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 got a day off today. <laughs> Thank you. 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 So if you're asking about where we, we get the glitter from, it you know, pops like this, so you get so many different colours and stuff as well. So. You always use that gel when you can stimulate it. Yeah, always use gel. Oh, do you know what I do? Like? Gel. I prefer gel if it's sticky enough, so not so much like watery. And then you've got to put it just sits on the hair. It doesn't... Yeah. Sebastian do a great one as well called liquid steel. Yeah. And that's, that's amazing for, uh, really for anything cool. like this. Creating very, very sleek, wet textures when you use them. Okay, so this is my wet to dry, sparkly look. So feel free to put a couple of and I hope you like it. <laughs> Well, so, I mean, the way of sort of taking this and diluting back to what you might do with salt. You might not be doing the, the whole block, you might just do whatever you do. Yeah. <coughs> it's interesting to see how this kind of wet to dry trend is 
developed because at the good time where people would never have even dreamt of wearing their hair like this, and now it's kind of become much more accessible and much more normal to see it. So what we'll do now, we'll ask the, the other two models to stand up as well. Um, we can let you walk around that so that's our presentation this afternoon. We wanted to share with you some of the, the more editorial stuff that we do in time as well. So it really shows a big mixture of, of, of work there, everything from the sort of structure and, and, and the classic skills of creating ponytails to something that's got a lot more texture to it. And then again, pushing it even further with this kind of editorial form of the as well. Um, by all means, if you want to come and get a picture of the, of the girls all together, if you want to do that, if you want some close look, please feel free to do that as well. Um, I'm certainly from our point of view, so thank you for, for watching this today, and hopefully you've enjoyed and got as much out of it as you can. Any questions at all, please feel free to ask me. Paul's <coughs> here to, 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 to finish off as well. Okay, well, wow, what a day. Hope you've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been amazing to see some fantastic hairdressing. Please put your hands together for another. Well, please come and take some photographs. Uh, please come and chat to, to Jody and to um, and to, to Robert. Um, hope you've really enjoyed today. A massive thank you to the college for hosting today. Uh, thank you to Amy for supporting us and helping us today. And uh, and have a safe journey home. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.